We've been lying to you. Not once. Not twice. But so far we've found eight different miniature painting, Warhammer and Hobby Lies we've spread out through the years. And honestly, the last one I'm kind of ashamed of. Using a wet palette will help you with this, keeping your paint to a perfect consistency over hours and sometimes even days, instead of just a few minutes. Okay, kind of true, but parts of it. <laughs> For some people, I guess. Not the days thing. But I mean, the environment here is freakishly dry, so yeah. the sponge just like... <coughs> For context, whenever we start painting, I fill the wet palette to the freaking brim with water, and after an hour, all the water is evaporated. So keeping your paints uh, moist for hours? Mm, an hour, maybe. Because we have two problems with this. It might keep the paint moist from underneath still, but we have a dry film on top of the paint after like an hour of painting. You start poking your brush and it's like BAM! Yeah, and then you have some it. of that dry pigment when you put it on the miniature and... All yeah. of a sudden you have blobs of paint everywhere, there's no smoothness. So what we do is like we paint for an hour with the paint and then we add a new drop of paint. So it's always fresh and even if you live in a moist place where the paint stays wet for a longer time you're gonna have a weird mix of too much water and moistness compared to medium and pigments when living in a moisture environment you might want to change that tiny drop of paint after an hour and that is the thing with the wet palette it's not supposed to keep your stuff paint ready for days upon days it's that hour as opposed to like a minute and a half on yeah. a dry palette so kind of a lie kind of true You can prime your miniatures in a winter's day. Okay, for some context. This is an airbrush video, and in pretty much every video I saw at that time and every painter I talked to, they were like, oh yeah, if, if you get an airbrush, you can prime your miniatures inside in the winter. And it's like, have we ever primed miniatures outdoors? Yes. Yes, we have. There's never been a problem with priming miniatures outside in the winter. We've done it like a billion times. Just make sure to really shake your primer really well, heat it in running water, make sure you have kept your miniatures inside so they're not like freezing temperature, and everything will sort itself out. Yeah, and don't prime outside for like an hour. No. It should be fine. We've never had problems priming in freezing weather. Except that one time. Okay, the next one is two freaking videos. One of my favorite primers is the Games Workshop Black Primer. It's just easy to apply and it's really smooth. It doesn't have overspray or give different textures to your miniatures. So this is the one I recommend to start with and then you can experiment from there. And another video I'm guessing it's gonna say the same thing. I prefer starting with a black primer. We've tried so many different brands of primer and the finest ones we found are Citadel. Okay, I, I see, the, see the lies here. <laughs> Since the making of these videos, there's been a new an upcoming star in this channel. Yeah. It's the Vallejo Primer. Because previously we used to like, we had both of them yes. and we used them both equally and we kind of enjoyed them both, didn't think much about it. But now that Citadel Primer is more expensive, we've only purchased the Vallejo until a few weeks back when the Vallejo one was out and we had to buy the Citadel one. And for some reason, in our mind, we had just made the Citadel Primer better than it actually is. Yeah, because I get freaking weird textures on it when I spray yes. with it. And the worst thing is, it is so glossy. Yes. So freaking glossy. The Vallejo one... Ah, the only thing so much I have to say in defense for the Citadel one, it's really thick. The color becomes really opaque, so it covers really well. Yeah, and still kind of small pigments, so it's fine. However, the Vallejo one sticks to the Mini better. Yes. And it's smoother. And it's not from Games Workshop. <laughs> No, but seriously, I don't like the Citadel anymore. No. I... no. And it always clogs. Yeah, the Vejo one... Mwah. Never clogs. Are you ready for number four? Uh, no, no, no. Uh. Don't use washes or contrast paints or similar products with your expensive brushes. Because all of these washes and contrast paint alternatives have a chemistry that breaks the surface tension. Which means that the paint will travel from the belly and just seep up into the ferrule. That feels like uh, something good, didn't it? You missed this another video. I do not take any responsibility for the things that just happened in this video. That wasn't me. You've never painted with contrast paints. On no to the next one. <laughs> do as we say, not as we do. 
But before we move on to number five, let me talk about this week's sponsor, Squarespace! Isn't it biscuits.com? Biscuits.com? What the hell? If you haven't lived under a rock, you already know what Squarespace is. But if you have lived under a rock, Squarespace is the best website on the internet to make your own website. And the best thing is they come with a gazillion trillion of different pre-made presets for your website so you can really make it look however you want. Yeah, it's pretty much drag and drop. You can make web stores, galleries, uh, display products online, maybe have a service where you cut people's hair. Hey, just even check our website. We've done all of this. Yes, look at the pretty merch that we have now on our website. It took us a couple of seconds to publish the products. Super easy to use. We can connect it to DHL. They have amazing services for that kind of stuff. And you don't need any background in being able to program or write code. Now, as we said, it's like drag and drop. We have a link down below in the video description where you can try out Squarespace for free. Just try to build a cool website that you want to do for your products or display your art or whatever you do. And then when you're ready to launch the website, you can use the code SQUIDMAR to get 10% off the entire purchase of that website or domain. Pretty sweet! Squarespace.com slash SQUIDMAR. We got it linked down there. Now let's go on to more lies we've told throughout the years. We're good at this. You can prime your miniatures. Why are they showing the same video at the same point again? You can prime your miniatures in a winter's day. You can get super smooth transition. Okay, I get it now. When was the last time you primed the miniature with the airbrush? I don't know. This has been like two years. Yes. The last time I primed the mini using, I think it was an AK surface primer. Yeah. The paint just came off. Yes. I touched the mini with my paintbrush and it just came off. I think we've tried six different airbrush primers and they all do the exact same you thing. You know what I think? I think the surface primers or airbrush primers are just acrylics. Yes, and I think the one in rattle cans, because they have solvents or some fucking chemical when you spray it out, remove all of the oil on the surface, which means that the paint sticks much better and the airbrush stuff doesn't. I don't, I, that was just my guess. I don't know if it's true. Chemicals. Goobertown, comment down below why it's different. Also, another thing, I freaking love Vallejo, and obviously we are sponsored by them with paints and stuff, but I freaking hate their airbrush primer. Yeah. I have not had one package of their airbrush primer that didn't turn into goop that clogs the airbrush to freaking insanity. Sorry, Vallejo, love you, but uh, the airbrush primer, not so good. Stick to rattle cans. Yeah. <laughs> Some people ask me if I use some varnish to seal the miniature. And the, the honest answer is I've never used varnish. It doesn't matter which varnish you have. Somewhat true, kinda. I guess the point that I'm saying in the video is that I don't use varnish to seal the miniatures after I've painted them. Yeah. Because I've never really had problems with the paint removing when I play with them. But we do use varnish. Yes. Most of the times because we use inks and contrast paints. And sometimes when you add additional layers with acrylics on top of them, the contrast and inks kind of seep through to the yeah. next paint and kind of mixes the pigments. Yeah. And sometimes you just want to like have the same sort of finish. Sur finish. Yeah. yeah. So AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish, that's the one we use and mostly to seal stuff before we add another layer of paint, not to seal it from touch. Uh, I touch, even, touch, touch, I touch. just thought of, we use the Tamiya stuff for ice and shit and vials and stuff all the time. Yeah, that's true, but that's... It's like gloss varnish. That is true, we use it to make glossy ice. <laughs> <laughs> We're so smart. Also, when we freaking painted the Thunderhawk and the Manta and stuff. Oh yeah, used like four different layers. Because resin miniatures and metal minis. Every time we paint 75 millimeter stuff, I always do varnish between the primer coat. Yeah, so you don't uh, yeah. lose the, yeah. That was a lie. I mean, maybe not back then, but now it's a lie. Myth busted. Number eight or whatever, seven. Either the sprugu that we mentioned earlier, or you can use something called green stuff, milliput. I'm not even going to finish this video. Freaking milliput and green stuff. The only time you can use them is when you mix them together. And, or like if you make bases. Yes. But I freaking hate both of them. Milliput is fine, like it sticks to my fingers all the time. And I know I shouldn't use them with my fingers, but I'm not gonna go grab gloves just to use Milliput for and a few seconds. You can't use gloves because then you don't get the fine control. Yeah, and the freaking green stuff. I've purchased, I think, eight packs of green stuff. And I had one pack that hadn't started to harden already. Yeah, because green stuff, it's not bad to sculpt with. It's just that every container of green stuff nowadays is dry already. 
Why? I haven't been able to buy one pack. Yeah, that this was wasn't good. a problem 10 years ago. Every green stuff maker, fix your shit. What do we use instead? My new preference doing the bulk stuff is yeah. the epoxy. And it's cheaper. It's way cheaper. And it's bigger packs. And they come in two different packs so you don't mix the two together. And it's very similar to the green stuff milliput mix you get yeah. when you mix them too. The Tamiya sculpting epoxy. Oh. It just replaces the pure green <laughs> stuff so well. It's more expensive, but I tried it like 10 seconds and all of a sudden I was like, I almost started crying because I had so much problems with green stuff and this was just heaven. Yes. I freaking love it. So, green stuff, milliput. Every color of milliput. <laughs>a very scientific scale. We graded them in coverage, we graded them in flow and yeah, price I mean, and okay, shit. not super scientific, but we did test them for like uh, between 1 to 5 hours with each paint yes. pot. The ones that came to the finals, we painted a total of 4 miniatures with the paints. So we thought like, okay, we have a decent understanding of how this paint works. So we put Reaper in second place, which back then they probably deserved it. In the test, yes. The problem is that we only had 10 paints yeah. and after the test, Reaper was super kind and sent us the entire box set of paints they have and we tried them for maybe 40, 50 hours and uh, I ended up not liking them at all. They're not shitty paints no. by any means. No, no, no. It's just that in the paint test we did, there are a few more paint brands that are better paints. Yes. Like the AK and the Citadel paints. Yeah. They have that little edge because the range is wider, they have the more vivid colors yeah. and And I feel like the big one for me is that the Reaper paints are difficult to work with because like half of the Reaper paints are really thin and don't have a lot of pigmentation. Yeah. And this causes a problem for beginners because you don't know why your paints aren't covering, why you're not getting the super saturated tones, why it looks like the layer from underneath is shining through. I personally just I prefer paints with more pigments that are thicker, that covers better, and uh, I would probably bump it down two or three steps. Yeah. Still decent paints, still good paints, some of them, but uh, I cannot put them in second place for no. paints. So I'm kind of ashamed of that. And sorry Reaper that we're kind of retconning this, but I gotta be honest, it's not my favorite paints anymore. <laughs> my dudes, that was it. Check out Squarespace and learn how to build a website because uh, it's an awesome platform to build your own website. As we said, like even our own merch store and website where you can buy Squidmore merch is done with Squarespace. So you can't go wrong. Also massive thanks to all of our patrons. Especially these three. Have a good day, bye bye.